I'm delighted to tell you today about the work that we recently published in Cell that has to do with the interactions of bacteria with each other in the context of a very interesting nanomachine called the Type 6 accretion system. The nanomachine itself is extremely dynamic, undergoes very dramatic changes uh, in its structure that can be visualized with fluorescent microscopy. And those changes uh, correspond to events that result in protein translocation. We've uh, been observing this machine in several different bacterial organisms. The organism that causes cholera, called Vibrio cholera, and the organism Pseudomonas aeruginosa, an opportunistic pathogen of cystic fibrosis patients. In the case of Vibrio cholera, the machine seems to cycle from one location in the cell to another location in the cell, and that corresponds to the ability of Vibrio cholera to kill many other bacterial species. In the case of Pseudomonas aeruginosa, the machine seems to remain in one place, and that place is more often than not exactly corresponding to the activity of the machine in an adjacent cell. We called this dual activity, this cell-cell interaction of the two machines, dueling to uh, emphasize that one cell seemed to attack another cell, and that was fo followed by a quick counterattack of the cell that was attacked. Now this was happening between sister cells, cells that are genetically identical, and obviously uh, Sister cells are not out to kill each other, and it turns out that there are immunity proteins in the system that prevents those attacks from being lethal uh, for sister cells. But having observed that, we came to the conclusion that this activity likely uh, had a basis for interactions of heterologous bacteria, species other than Pseudomonas, and that was the focus of this paper. So what we uh, went ahead and did was we took Vibrio cholera and labeled it with fluorescent dyes that allowed it to be red, and then put that together with Pseudomonas aeruginosa, uh, labeling those cells green. And as you can see in our videos, when you mix these cells together, a very dramatic thing occurs. The red cells, the Vibrio cholera cells, begin to round up. They go from their classic Vibrio comma-shaped, elongated, rod-like cells to these round spherical cells. Those cells represent uh, cells that are in the process of actually lysing, breaking apart, and dying. And you can measure that quantitatively and show that indeed Pseudomonas aeruginosa kills Vibrio cholera, and the killing event depends on type 6. But the remarkable additional observation we made was that if we inactivated the type 6 machine in Vibrio cholera and did the same experiment again, these Pseudomonas aeruginosa had no interest in killing the Vibrio cholera, and they coexisted. In other words, the attack of the type 6 positive Vibrio cholera cell was inducing a lethal counterattack from the Pseudomonas that resulted in that cell's death. This is why we call it tit for tat. If the Vibrio attacks first, the Pseudomonas counterattacks. If the Vibrio is a pacifist and does not attack the Pseudomonas, the Pseudomonas just as well would live peacefully and coexist. And this may actually reflect ecological decisions that are made by bacteria to form mixed biofilms together, either in the extracellular environment or perhaps even inside uh, the human host, where they coexist in large, diverse communities. We were able to show that this conclusion was correct by performing an experiment where three different color cells were mixed together. We mixed red Vibrio cholera that were type 6 positive and therefore aggressive cells with green Vibrio cholera that were type 6 negative and therefore cooperative cells, and finally gray colored or, or dark colored Pseudomonas aeruginosa that had the job of differentiating who was who. And surprisingly, the Pseudomonas aeruginosa did a wonderful job of killing only the red cells in this mixed population, never touching the Vibrios that were cooperative and not attacking Pseudomonas aeruginosa. This really proves that the system is extraordinarily good at detecting the attacking cell and killing only that cell while causing no collateral damage. Based on the detailed microscopy analysis and genetic analysis we performed, we've developed a model for what actually type 6 dueling represents. The model begins with the apparatus assembling the Vibrio cholera cell and firing in the direction of a Pseudomonas cell. That firing event apparently perturbs the membrane in the target Pseudomonas cells to activate a regulatory system that we identified as being responsible for sensing the attack. That regulatory system transmits the signal to another protein through a phosphorylation event. At that point, Pseudomonas aeruginosa assembles the apparatus in the vicinity of the initial signal and fires back its own type 6 apparatus at the offending Vibrio cholera cell. 
this repeated firing occurs until the pseudomonas cell no longer detects any threat from the Vibrio cholera cell. And at that point, a phosphatase dephosphorylates a key protein in the regulatory cascade, resulting in the turn down of type 6 activity in the pseudomonas cell. When we first embarked upon this work, we were really surprised to find out that bacteria can respond to each other in, in such an intimate and dynamic way over such short periods of time. This was really the exciting part of this whole study, was really to recognize that in complex communities of bacteria, be they in the environment or inside the host, these sorts of pitched battles are going on to uh, establish themselves in mixed biofilms, to compete with each other, and to see the dynamic activity uh, in real time was really one of the most uh, gratifying experiences in my scientific career.